one of the finer things the Irish ever contributed to the world is beef and Guinness. And the Irish have put a lot out there that's pretty good. I love beef and Guinness. This is a really fabulous, slow braised beef stew, and it's really not hard. It takes a few minutes, um, especially at the beginning, because we're going to brown off all the meat. We're going to do it slowly. Um, it's not difficult at all. And in, in, in a few minutes, actually, once we get this done, we're going to throw it all in the slow cooker and walk away. All right, so right here, I've got about two cups of flour. I've got a good solid tablespoon each of garlic and onion powder. I've got about a tablespoon of salt and half a tablespoon of black pepper. Now, let me show you a trick. When you're going to be doing this, you can't taste raw meat. This, however, is one of the main ways that flavor gets into our soup. So, eh. it actually needs more salt. Now, yeah, it tastes like raw flour, but that's, where's my kosher salt? Oh, wait, it's right here. It tastes like raw flour. It's not going to hurt anything. It's in that big blue box that says kosher salt. Thank you. <laughs> raw flour isn't going to hurt you. It just tastes like raw flour. But if your flour doesn't taste seasoned at this point, it's going to be a lot harder to get the flavor in without it tasting salty. So, yeah, it's pretty good. All right. This first little step is really easy. Medium high heat. Got a tablespoon of olive oil. And we're just going to start dredging the beef. We're going to drop it into the flour mixture. And one of the things that you want to remember when you're going to cook off or brown any kind of uh, meat, you want to make sure that it's got lots and lots of room in the pan. If you give everybody in the pan enough room to have its own little real estate, then it'll get brown and yummy and crispy. Of course, I won't say crispy in the stew, but the brown is what develops the flavor. If you crowd everything together and it's too close, as it releases the moisture from contact with the oil, it'll steam. That's not lovely. Okay. So this is our first step. We're just going to dredge off, and as each of these little pieces gets brown and beautiful on all sides, we're going to pull it off and set it to the side in our big bowl. And I will come back when I've done that and show you the next part of this. Okay, all of our beef is browned off, and we have a yummy little, oh, he didn't want to give it up. In the bottom here, see all that stuff? That's the good stuff. That's little bits and pieces of little juice and seasoned up flour and all that wonderful stuff that you want. It's called uh, fond. Actually, in France, it's called suck. But in America, most of the time when somebody says fond, they mean that stuff. The stuff that sticks to the bottom. Fond means foundation in French, so it's the foundation for flavor, foundation for the stock base, whatever. Okay. We're going to put in, now listen, I'm making a double recipe because my family is so large, but on the website I wrote out for half of what I'm doing here. So we put in about three and a half great big yellow onions chopped up, and we're going to let these just start doing their thing. We've got, I think I had six carrots. They were really big, so I only used six. So those go in there, and we've got about six cloves of garlic, which is always a good thing, in my opinion. So everything's going in here, just like that. And then we're about to pull a magic trick. When you're mixing this up, you really want all that stuff that was on the bottom to dissolve up into the liquid. Liquid from the vegetables, yes. But, more importantly, this little elixir right here. Because this is an amazing flavor. Now, the recipe on the website, and I'll put a link to it in the bottom, calls for one bottle. I used two. And a bigger pot. <laughs> but if you're making a smaller amount, you only use one. Now, you can feel all that stuff dissolving. Beer or stout or wine or um, any vinegar, all kinds of things like that. Citrus, they all serve the same purpose when you're braising. It's an acid, and they will help break down and dissolve flavors and compounds that are in things and make it all come together. It also helps to uh, tenderize the meat. Now, 
In this case, I'm going to put all the beef back in there. And you want all the juice and the drippings that came out. Just like when meat's resting, you want the juices in the right place. We'll save your juices. And, hey Brent, I talk about this in the article. Sometimes you need more liquid than it is in the beer, so we're going to add some chicken broth too. Honey, in the mason jar, in the bottom of the cooler, hand me one of those things of chicken broth. I got chicken broth. So, I don't know, one big or two small sprigs of thyme, a couple of bay leaves, and a little bit of rosemary. <laughs> Pardon me. I wish I had fresh rosemary. It's actually better, but I don't have any, so I'm just using the dried stuff. I guess that was about a teaspoon. Rosemary can really dominate flavors. Thank you. So be careful with it. I want to add more, go ahead and add more. But if you add too much, it'll taste like a pine tree. All right. So look, it's my chicken jello. So this is going in the pot too. That's about perfect. There we go. Now, what we're going to do at this point, once I've got all of those things scraped up off the bottom and nicely dissolved, I'm going to actually stick this in a slow cooker. I'm going to put it on low and I'm going to let it go for, uh, I guess, about six hours. You can do up to, to eight or ten if you want to, especially if you're doing a great big batch. But at this point, I'm going to continue scraping and once that's done, I'm going to taste a little bit of salt and pepper. We already seasoned the flour so you don't need too much. And then I'm going to let the slow cooker do its little magic thing. Okay? I'll be back. 